I thought I would mention this just because it's been on my mind a lot lately. As I've been working with people who are trying to disentangle from the reductionist non-dual belief, the thing that people keep coming back up with is guilt, that there's this immense feeling of guilt in leaving behind the way or leaving behind turning their back on the one real way that it is and feeling almost like this punishing figure. Sometimes they'll say, I'm dreaming of these non-dual gurus, like punishing me to a life of suffering or ignorance. If I'm, who am I to question these things? I've been really fascinated by this guilt factor because I don't think I ever experienced guilt in the sense of I'm doing something bad. It was more doubt and fear. I have known it. You have had that? Yeah, not with non-duality, but when I left my guru, who Mm -hmm. I did the thing with eventually all these years later, I left him twice actually. And the first time I went back a few years later. And yeah, no, I really had it both times both times of really wrestling with this having uh, the first time because I thought I had taken a lesser path because I'd gone yeah. off to play rock and roll instead of becoming a that's really a lesser <laughs> dev- devotee so it's just like, oh. but the second time I'd come off because I thought this is fucking crazy shit this is a cult yeah. and I need to get out mm-hmm. but I still had this wrestling for some time going on inside me with having betrayed the teacher or lost the way or all of those things you're describing. So yeah, I, I sympathize with that. Do you feel get... that it was a very much like a relationship based thing because you had a personal relationship with that figure? Maybe yes, in that instance, perhaps, but mostly I think it's because you've ideated the world in a particular way which has been, this is the truth. And then you've doubted it and turned away from it. So now you've got two ways of ideating the world inside you. Mm -hmm. You've got your old way, which hasn't gone anywhere. And then you've got the new way, which is just taking off. So there is actually a period of transition. Yeah. And and you will move back like anything, you know what it's like. You just set up, I'm not drinking coffee from now on. It buzzes me out. There's going to be, in the morning, there will be a part of you that wakes up and goes, you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. and, and so we do, that's how we transition. And, yeah. and that will, that's the guilt trip. And, and, and I, I certainly saw a huge amount of it with Christianity when we yeah. did the Jesus mysteries. Yes, yes. It where just people were liberated, thing. just absolutely beside themselves in a new world, going great. And also, mm, I get these moments where it's... Yeah. I feel like I want to say that the key is to get the idea clearly that you're not leaving some that behind yes you're moving it on to a new level thank you that's exactly what i've tried to get to is that it's not that you're regressing but yeah. that we're you are progressing. progressing leaving behind the worst taking the yeah. best and to a you new have level moved on and you can see more yeah. you keep every all the great insights you had those are not going anywhere you can just add to them and see it in a better more healthy way which means that you you, your soul has done that and is now ready to do that yes and is there a way to put that into the evolutionary light to say that these ideas originated at a time when people didn't see everything that we can see now or that we know exactly right and most of the world rejecting philosophies arose because the world is a really hard place. There was a little, a fun little insight that I had when we were doing the Jesus mysteries, because I could see that there was this, the way that Peter and I talked about it was there's a positive and negative gnosis, hmm. where there's a positive gnosis, which is, it's amazing. And there was a negative gnosis, which was, you don't have to be in this hell, you can get away and it's great. Hmm. And what was interesting is that the positive notice was nearly always amongst affluent pagan philosophers and the negative notices was around poor really? um jewish people who were being oppressed by the roman state because huh. their experience was shit and no, these guys bad. were having a pretty good time of it and so there's that you, what your relationship is with the world which goes with your thing of if you're someone who's been lucky enough like i've been to have generally a pretty happy relationship with the world and with life you're less yeah. likely to fall into that but if you're someone 
who's really having a hard time for all sorts of reasons, yeah, then you're more likely to think, yeah, no, this is this is hell I want to get out. Right. It's a great analogy. Like the external affluence or well-being. Yeah. Sometimes I think a lot of people in the non-dual world have it looks like everything is great on the outside, but it's more that internal experience. Yeah. So that's super helpful what you're saying about seeing how it's this is a more of a healthy progression of it but then what i get really focused on is like how it seems like a huge key for me and for a lot of people is unpacking authoritarian truth itself and ultimate truth and then all of what i've learned from you with the how do you come to know what's true just because you experience it as true doesn't mean that it's true so that's part of this, what I've been saying, I want to do this thing called the unbecoming no one or the emergent self, a guide to unbecoming no one. I'm just going to cut it there. <laughs> that part of that guide is in order to even take on a new perspective or even try a new perspective, we have to dismantle the grip that there's just one true way. All these different things that I've learned from you, I'm trying to communicate them in an easy way for people to see. So yeah, I guess was maybe curious a little bit, like how you see that tying into the guilt, like that if you can realize that you're not turning away from the one way it is, that could just unleash it. Because why should we feel bad if we're seeing something differently from one perspective? I mean, a, a part true. of that is just get to get the evolutionary picture. Because yeah. if, 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 you, if your fundamental picture is you've fallen into an illusion and you've rejected the way out, then you're going to feel bad about it. But if your fundamental picture is everything is evolving, including <laughs> me, and I've just evolved. And that thing which really got me yesterday, it's not working now. And if you get that truth is trustworthiness, you've gone, is, is it as trustworthy as I thought? I think this thing has got something trustworthy in it yeah. somewhere, but that doesn't feel like it's trustworthy. So how can I get this thing and find out what, how can I get this in a different way? Right. And then move on it seems really hard to choose to be i don't mean this as oh the chosen few but that there's so many more people through history and presently who are part of that old paradigm that it yes. feels like breaking away from it to be feel influenced by a few people here like yourself and other people yeah. that are jason schulman different people saying something different that it you don't have as much faith in numbers that's and, really and that and that that is just reasonable because we human beings have evolved to think probably the herd knows best except yeah. sometimes it really doesn't yeah. <laughs> it's like not takes... if you're a, a lemming yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so you have to be able to judge that when and look carefully to see which is but the truth is even they've already done that because the herd isn't non-duality the herd thinks that's all rubbish that's true you no know, it's a very small herd it's just one that they've got into. It's a community yeah. they've just got into. That's they true. Into. They left the fold once. <laughs> and they, they just move across. But, but yeah. that, that, it's reasonable. And that's one of the things I'm thinking of doing. I did it with a retreat was, and it seemed to work quite well. It might be in the first chapter. It's going, look, there's these ideas in the perennial philosophy. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very attractive, the idea of the perennial philosophy, because it feels like look, everyone has said this through history. Yeah. So that. Exactly. probably true and and i want to go yeah look everyone's had experiences which seem really important through history but they have actually interpreted them in different ways and yeah. we need to interpret it in our way which is appropriate yeah. to what we know yes and that's what so the, so the the people have been having these type of experiences peren perennially but we just need to keep changing the understanding to what's the best we can do now mm -hmm. and yeah. so that they're it's a, it is, God, I've been saying this for years. It just seems, it is particular to spirituality, isn't it? This idea that if it's very old, it's better. But you just don't get that in medicine or technology sure. or any. <laughs> yes, I believe in the ancient wisdom. I'm going to <laughs> take my brain out because it's just a cooling system for the blood. I can cool it with something else. And it's like no one does that. And it seems that a big key also is the excitement factor knowing people like you i feel excited to be part of explore yeah i think that's important too let's because... feel lucky and excited and yes i almost feel the sense and i don't mean this in a sense of superiority but a sense of almost sadness for those who haven't been able 
to get to see it in another way. So I think so too. And I think there is a way of doing that because it does, it can easily drift into all of the, that's the problem. All of this can drift into cultishness. We know that because there's so many cults, yeah. but also it's to do with the individuals. And what I love is that the individuals who I've most surrounded myself with, I'm not like that at all. And don't, I'm not like that. And no one treats me like that. And it just feels like it'll be fine. And then what you're left with is, aren't these ideas beautiful? <laughs> exactly. Can't they really help? And yeah. then that's lovely. Yeah. It's, isn't that great? Which is why I'm sure, I'm very confident you know this, but I'll say it anyway, which is, you know, why I couldn't, when you come along and you go, oh, I love this, I'm going to take it and do this with it. And what do you think? And can you help me? It's, yeah, you bet. Of course. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Is, I'm so pleased. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, go and do something great with them. Brilliant. Exactly. And I hope yeah. it's a huge success. And, <laughs> and so this, it's like that openness can breed something positive, which doesn't fall into all those old paradigms.